Dr. Alan Marion Davis joins us now from Salisbury in the UK. He's an honorary professor of public health at King's College London. Thank you so much for your time, doctor. Now, do all six strains of COVID-19 have very different symptoms or is there a common thread that we're seeing here with all six strains? Uh, there's a common thread. Um, all of them have, um, have uh, symptoms such as headache and uh, loss of smell um, and usually cough as well. Uh, but some of them have um, other symptoms. For instance, some of them have abdominal symptoms like uh, loss of appetite or diarrhea. Um, and then further on, as they become more severe, the, the more severe clusters have things like um, fatigue and confusion. And the most severe cluster is where you have respiratory symptoms, like your, your cough, uh, plus your abdominal symptoms, plus your fatigue, and plus your confusion. When you have all of those, that's a very severe set of symptoms. And that does imply that you've got about a one in five chance of needing to go into hospital. So, Doctor, what's this research now taught us uh, about the virus? Well, it, it, it's taught us that uh, it affects people in different ways. Um, and it seems to af affect them according to how their uh, immune system reacts. Uh, we already know that older people are much more uh, vulnerable, certain um, communities, ethnic communities more vulnerable. Um, but there's something else going on as well, probably linked to the, the people's um, immune systems. And the, by having these this set of these uh, different clusters of symptoms being identified within the first five days, whereas normally you wait for about 13 or 14 days before you know whether you have to go into hospital, by finding the, out these, these symptoms, these cluster warning signs in, in, within five days, that's really helpful because that means you can get people into hospital that much earlier and that could save lives. Yeah, so just talk us through how this research is now actually going to help medical professionals in treating those uh, with the coronavirus or preventing possibly the spread of it. Well, it's really more about treating those with the, with the virus. I mean, it's been, it's been conducting on, on uh, groups of people, um, of 1,600 people in one case, then a follow-up group of 1,000. And it's, it's identified these key cluster sets. And it helps the clinicians, the general practitioners and the, the people advising online and eventually, of course, the, the uh, hospital physicians to identify those who need respiratory support, ventilators and all that stuff as early as possible. Because the sooner you get to, that support in the people who, who are developing severe clusters of symptoms, the, the, the sooner you can prevent things getting much worse and the, the, the more lives you can save. Mm, it really seems like this will be a, a game changer in the treatment of COVID-19. Uh, just tell us, is there any other research that's underway at the moment to help us find, find out more about this virus and help uh, the prevention and the treatment of it? There's masses and masses of research going on, um, particularly in terms of treatment, as you say. And, you know, we already know about dexamethasone, which is a very cheap and very widely available drug, and that's certainly saving lots of lives. And other drugs are coming on, on stream as well. But, of course, the thing we're all waiting for and is the vaccine and or, or, or several different vaccines. And there are over 100 groups around the world who are working on the vaccine, going to cl clinical trials now. And there's, a, there's high hopes that we'll have something widely available across the globe by perhaps the end of this year, but more likely the first quarter of next year. And we're all hoping and praying that that, that is successful. Yeah, we're all hoping and praying indeed that we will have something by the end of the year. Dr. Alan Marion Davis, live to us there from Salisbury. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.